Hello and welcome to Around the World in 8 Minutes, a show by People's Dispatch. In this show, we look at the struggles of people across the world for justice and their rights as they stand united before the forces of repression and exploitation. Tens of thousands of people took to the streets across Venezuela to commemorate the 31st anniversary of the first popular insurrection against neoliberalism in the country known as Caracazo. Venezuelans also ratified the socialist and Chavista state model yesterday which puts the people and their dignity first. 31 years ago, on February 27, 1989, the people of Venezuela had come out onto the streets of the capital of Caracas to protest against the neoliberal policies of the then president, Carlos Andes Perez. These policies had been recommended by the International Monetary Fund, IMF, and the United States. In the face of a revolt against the government, Perez decreed a state of emergency and suspended all constitutional guarantees for the citizens. The government permitted the National Army to use firearms against the protesters and unleashed a brutal crackdown that resulted in hundreds of deaths. This social uprising laid the foundation for the struggle to restore democracy in the country, led by Commander Hugo Chavez, which was achieved in 1992. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro congratulated the people for their commemoration of the anniversary of Caracazo and their rejection of neoliberalism, capitalism and the interventionism by the United States. The day has been internationally recognized as the International Day of Solidarity with Venezuela and against neoliberalism. Marking the occasion, several social and political movements from around the world held marches, forums and events in support of the Bolivarian Revolution. Interference and coercive measures imposed by the U.S. government against the people of Venezuela were widely condemned. The second vice president of the Venezuelan National Constituent Assembly, Gladys Requena, said that the International Day is a slap in the face of U.S. President Donald Trump. The day recognizes and validates the resistance of the people of the world against the capitalistic economic models forced upon them. The celebrations in countries like Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, France, Haiti and across the globe also highlight the negative social, economic and environmental impacts of neoliberal policies. The day is thus also meant to express solidarity with the people struggling against neoliberalism and those suf suffering under unilateral coercive measures imposed by imperialist powers. The people of Venezuela, Iran, Cuba, Nicaragua, Syria, Russia, Yemen, Palestine, the Sahrawi Arab Republic, the People's Republic of China, among others, have been long suffering the brunt of imperialism. Celebrations of the International Day also mark the support for the lawsuit filed by Venezuela against the United States government for its crimes of aggression and its attempts for an economic, financial and commercial blockade of Venezuela. The Ghana Medical Association, the GMA, has withdrawn its call for a strike from February 29 after securing assurances from the government in a meeting on February 26. The GMA represents doctors, dentists and other healthcare practitioners in the country. On February 21, the GMA had called on its members to withdraw their services at all facilities from February 29. In protest against the government's failure to honour the conditions of service, the COS agreement signed in November last year. For years, the government healthcare professionals in Ghana had been working without any agreement on COS detailing their entitlements. Finally, in July 2015, the GMA embarked on a strike action demanding that the allowances for accommodation, clothing and other utility and professional allowances be specified in such an agreement. The government healthcare services in the country were paralysed during the three-week-long strike by the GMA members. The government was forced to finally sign the COS, which took effect from January 1, 2016 and was valid till December 31, 2018. On its, on its expiry, the GMA tried negotiating with the government for a new COS agreement. However, it was only signed by November of 2019 after the threat of another strike action was issued. 
this COS agreement has not yet been implemented, the deadline for which was January 1, 2020. The GMA's National Executive Committee has noted that the salaries paid for the month of February do not include the fuel allowances promised to the workers in the COS. Members have been further advised to notify the employers about any other discrepancies in their pay slips. The GMA had demanded full implementation of the COS by 29th February 2020, including the payment of arrears, failing which its members would withdraw their services in all government facilities. The GMA had also written separate letters to the Ministry of Health and to the Ministry of Employment and Labour Relations calling for immediate intervention to ensure that their demands are met in order to prevent a strike. Responding to this letter, the two ministries, along with the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission, held a meeting with the union representatives. Following the assurances by the government, the GMA has agreed to call off its intended strike. The Israeli army on February 25th, Tuesday, attacked a peaceful Palestinian protest in the northern Jordan Valley, northeast of the occupied West Bank, as per reports from the Palestinian Wafa News Agency and the International Middle East Media Center. Several protesters were injured by Israeli soldiers who reportedly used live fire, rubber-coated metal bullets, tear gas bombs and concussion grenades during their assault. The protesters were demonstrating near the Israeli military checkpoint at Tayasid, east of the West Bank city of Tubas, against the Israeli annexation and colonization of Palestinian lands and the Israeli bid to annex the whole of the Jordan Valley. The Palestinian Red Crescent Society confirmed that five Palestinians were transferred to a nearby hospital with injuries from live and metal-coated rubber bullets. Forty others also suffered tear gas inhalation and had to be medically treated. Israeli soldiers had earlier prevented the Palestinian Israeli soldiers had earlier prevented the Palestinian protesters from crossing the checkpoint to enter the Jordan Valley. The non-violent demonstration was organized by the National Committee against the annexation wall and colonies along with the Palestinian Fateh Movement's Anti-Colonies Committee in Tubas. Palestinian sources stated that approximately 1,000 people took part in the protests. The protesters also denounced the Middle East peace plan put forth by U.S. President Donald Trump, which he had announced in the presence of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on January 28. They also registered their strong protest against the ever-expanding illegal Israeli Jewish settlements on Palestinian lands. That's all we have time for in this episode of Around the World in 8 Minutes. To know more about these stories, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, I'm